Oh man, do you guys really need to know how long I've been single? Hello and welcome to my channel, Haley Marie Vintage. Today I'm very excited. I am bringing you a 1950s sewing project. Uh, let me real quick grab the pattern. I am doing this pattern here. This pattern is actually really intricate and interesting, but because of the way I'm doing the fabric, I'm not doing the like, I don't know what to call it, the, the bicolor or whatever. I'm not doing that because this project is a part of another collaboration. This is a collaboration with a lot of the same people that I did my 40s Friendsgiving with, and I will be linking everybody who's participating down below. We are a little bit more varied in who's able to participate this round. This is just kind of your friendly reminder that a lot of us YouTubers have full-time jobs outside of YouTube, and we can't always do everything we want to do because this isn't our full-time jobs. Anybody who can participate in this one, I am gonna link down below. I'm excited to see what everybody makes. In this case, I am just sewing. I am not doing another recipe. I actually would love to revisit recipes at some point, but right now I can barely bear cooking for myself. <laughs> um, so I'm not doing any extra cooking on top of that. That's a pass for me. So we've talked about the pattern a little bit. I will be modifying this guy and I will talk you through what I'm doing to modify it. And I'm mainly modifying it because I'm using this gorgeous border print that I picked up at that factory. This is what it looks like. It's so pretty. I'm so excited to make a dress. So basically the reason I'm modifying this is I'm not combining this. Actually, I think this would have been really cool combined with another fabric, but I'm not doing that. I am trying to sew what's already in my stash, which is this guy, and I don't have anything that matches it. So my plan is to have the border print around the skirt, and then there's like this little thing here. I am planning on having this up at the top of that as well. And then the other thing I'm planning on doing that's a like slight alteration on this pattern is because this pattern has like little holes and stuff in it, I'm actually planning on flatlining I think that's the term for it, I'm not sure. But I'm lining it with this so that way any of the holes aren't showing because I plan on probably cutting some of the areas with holes for the bodice as well because I think this is really pretty and I want to include it. Uh, so that is the plan. I'm super excited to make this dress for Valentine's Day. I don't really date, so Valentine's Day is just kind of a, another day for me. I have not been in a relationship for Valentine's Day Oh man, do you guys really need to know how long I've been single? Eight years? Something like that. Dating just isn't a priority for me. I find it exhausting. Yeah, I just, I find it tiring and I would much honestly rather spend my like Valentine's holiday alone sewing <laughs> and I don't know what that says about me. So we are gonna now go ahead and dive in to making this garment. All right, here I am cutting out my pattern. So for this skirt, because I'm not making the complicated pattern that like comes with this, I went ahead and I put all the pattern pieces together and measured and then wrote down those measurements. And I ended up going with about a 28 inch long length and cutting from there. This felt like a length that would hopefully hit me the way I wanted. Usually I don't cut the skirt first, but I decided to this time because I really needed the space from the embroidery and it was really the skirt that was gonna make this shine. And then after cutting the skirt, I cut out all the facing pieces, which I cut out of the very tippity top of this. I debated doing it in the lining fabric, but I decided to go with this fabric because it was just a little bit heavier. And then after that, I was cutting out the bodice pieces. And again, I cut these close to the embroidered edges and then last was just cutting that little piece that goes up on the bodice that points towards my face and the embroider scallopy stuff. This was just a longer cutting process because of how specific I was being with where I placed things. And I wore a vintage dress while doing this, which I don't think I will do again, at least not one with a hand stitched hem because in the process of cutting this, I completely ripped all of the hem stitchings out and now I'm gonna have to re-hem this dress. So I made more work for myself while cutting a sewing pattern. Yeah, would not recommend and I won't do again. I will stick with rolled hem dresses from here on out when I cut out patterns. Um, I thought I would kind of talk about romance and relationships a little bit since this is a Valentine's Day themed video. As I mentioned, I've been single around Valentine's Day for a long time. That's not saying I haven't dated people, but uh, Valentine's Day has never been my thing when I've been in romantic relationships. It's just not, I don't know, my vibe. However, I do kind of want to talk about the beauty of platonic friendships and how I think in America or maybe worldwide, I don't know, you'd have to comment down below if you're from somewhere else. I just don't feel like we give the appreciation and love we should to our platonic friendships. My platonic friendships I find so fulfilling and it's actually why I haven't been dating for a while is just because 
if I have the choice to spend time with somebody who I love and who makes me a better person and pushes me for two hours instead of like sitting on a date with someone who's boring my brains out, I just would much rather spend that time with that platonic friend because honestly, I get a lot of emotional intimacy and things that I need out of that. And I just think it's really important to acknowledge those non-romantic relationships. And so I encourage you this Valentine's Day to text a friend that you just really appreciate and love or do something nice for them. I don't think Valentine's Day needs to be about romantic relationships. I think it can also just be about those really intimate platonic friendships. Alrighty, Boop. let's get my hair in order. Um, I'm feeling very weird today. I don't know why, but um, I'm into it. So yesterday I cut out on my material, it took me about two hours, which is actually longer than usual for a project. And I think because I was being so careful about where I was placing that. And so I did cut that out. I have decided from here on out, I'm going to just sell the rest of the fabric that I don't use from these projects. I always hoard it like I'm going to use it again in like a blouse or something and then I never do. So I will let you know, I guess at the end, the details of how and where and what I'm selling. Other than that, I am feeling optimistic about today other than I somehow, it's 11.30 and I'm planning on starting up on this project at eight with the goal of this being a one day project. We'll see if that can now happen because I have a hard stop at about 2, 2.30 to go over to a friend's house and check in on their cats as well as I need to run by my P.O. box because I realize I haven't been there in a month. I'm planning on starting by basting the lining layer and the normal layer together, I guess. I think that's kind of it for my game plan. Um, well, I mean, that's not it. And then I'll start to sew the pattern like I normally would. There's a few things I'm not gonna lie that I'm a little anxious about figuring out how to do, but I'm sure it will all work itself out. It usually does. So with that, let's actually get into the sewing. I realized I brewed my tea way too hot. Oh, actually it's not as hot. Um, I have a very small cup of tea today because I it's black tea and me and caffeine is debatably questionable. So we're gonna add to weird day by drinking some caffeine and see on a scale of one to 10 where my anxiety goes. <laughs> um, hopefully nowhere terrible, uh, but let's now go ahead and get started by sewing the things. All right, we are ready to start and I started by pinning the lining to the fabric and then I am going to be stitching that together to make sure everything lays in place. And then after I do this, I went ahead and sewed together the facings and put in the darts and all that jazz it's off camera. All right, if you hear purring, Spooky is currently sitting in my lap purring and I'm not gonna kick her out because I'd feel bad while I'm recording this voiceover. So yeah, he might hear some cat purring, but here I am pinning this like rectangle to the point of the bodice that it's supposed to go in. This was kind of a weird process because essentially you're just seaming this to be kind of a part of the fabric. And I was basting this because eventually when I put in the facing, it's going to like permanently sew this and I just need it basted for now. And then the other thing I am pinning on and then basting is the little bow tie in the back. That will be really cute. I initially started to pin this on the wrong way and then I kind of like did the math in my head and flipped it the correct way. And then I basted those in. Again, this is done before the facing, so that way it's like sandwiched between the facings. And then here I am just prepping my pieces to sew the whole bodice together. We're getting pretty close to the more exciting part of this process or the part that makes me a little bit more anxious, whatever you wanna call it. I wanted to real quick show a sleeping spooky. She is sleeping on a Taco Bell bag that she has torn up. She's being very peaceful just under my ironing board. And then back to the true matter at hand, which is building this dress, not watching spooky sleep. So here I am pinning in the facings and that is going okay, I guess. I did the arm facings first. And then here I am sewing this all in and figuring it out. And of course, as I'm sewing, I always have to give you some spooky footage. Spooky was feeling quite mischievous and was very in the way and very annoying. Love her, but 
She makes me anxious sometimes when I sew and I caught this little gem on camera. While I was kind of moving her around and setting her down, I, I didn't have my pin cushion out because I couldn't find it, which is funny because from this view, you can see my pin cushion is right under that little shelf, but it was blocked back behind my box. To my horror, I had moved Spooky because she was on the ironing board watching my needle and I didn't want that accident. So I set her on my sewing box, which I was using as a pin cushion. And then she proceeds to grab three pins in her mouth and start kind of swinging them around. I feel like I managed to keep my cool while taking them out of her mouth, but it nearly gave me a heart attack. I'm only showing you this footage because everything was okay. After this happened, I watched this footage, I don't even know how many times, counting the pins in her mouth because I knew I grabbed three pins out of her mouth and I wanted to make sure I got them all. So yeah, that, that was fun. Um, sewing with cats is ever and forever an adventure. Me actually showing you the complicated part of this neck facing you're seeing kind of more of the inner workings. I feel like I didn't do a great job showing you guys this, but essentially, like, I have all these pins. I'm essentially going to top stitch, but then the facing has to be flipped up and out, where the facing just basically is on top, and so then you're basically, you're, you're stitching blind one way in a way that I don't like. And so I had to be really, really careful while sewing this, and I was really trying to not screw it up and ruin everything, which I managed to do fine. I did have to unpick one of the corners and redo it, but I think overall I was fairly successful. So uh, we are in here in my lovely 80s bathroom. Uh, I just felt like it's probably helpful for you guys to know how I get rid of these. So basically before I attach the bodice to like something bigger, I try to get rid of these because I don't need these marks anymore now that the bodice is made. And so this is just water that I'm spraying on this ink. I am getting this pretty wet, but I still find it more successful to spray it than dump, dunk it because it definitely dries faster when you do this over when you um, dunk the whole thing. And then I'm just rubbing it to try to make sure all the ink actually dissipates and I'll show you this again in the morning. I guess maybe I'll awkwardly do my morning check-in in here or something to show you if this went away or not. Um, but since I live in a very humid climate right now, uh, actually it's not normally this bad, but right now it's, it's more humid than I would say normally. It takes a while for things to dry, so I try to minimize that by, like I said, not dunking the whole thing. Although honestly, this one's gonna need enough spraying that I almost may as well dunk the whole thing. Oh dear. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't have a zip. And this also shows you the bodice uh, where we're at at the end of the today. Uh, today did not go necessarily as planned. I'll talk about that more tomorrow morning. Good morning. So we are back the next day. Um, I'm pretty pleased with the progress I made on the dress. I did not finish the dress in a day like I had kind of planned, but I'm totally okay with that just because right now um, you'll maybe have noticed on some of my close-ups uh, because my hands are looking pretty red and peely right now. Um, I'm having a pretty bad eczema flare-up on my hands, which makes it so I just like can only sew so many hours a day because like my hands just like hurt after touching fabric. Every time I poke myself with a pin, it's like magnified the pain times like five or six when my hands are like this. So I just like can't sew for like the long about of the day that I normally can. So I only sewed, I think three or four hours yesterday. Let's see, I started at noon. I stopped at about 3.30. Uh, and then I hand sewed for probably about another hour. So what, about four and a half hours. I did come out with a very successful bodice. I think this is looking so cute and I can't wait to see what it looks like all made up and attach the skirt, which is what we're doing today. As you can see, all those blue lines I sprayed are gone in this fabric. I'm super pleased with this dress so far. I think it's gonna be so cute uh, and I absolutely adore this little detail here. So now I just need to spend my morning um, working on the skirt, wrapping that up, which should be pretty easy because I basically just have to do up the side seams and then I have to gather it, attach it to the bodice, and then put in the zipper. So all of that is pretty easy and I will walk you through that today and then we should be wrapped up and ready for the reveal, hopefully. And the other thing is I realized yesterday I was feeling so weird because I forgot to take my anxiety medication, which at this point I feel a complete difference. Like I, I like don't know how I lived life <laughs> before cause uh, now when I like forget to take it, I realize that's like how I was living all the time. Like I left my house and I had to drive back to make sure there weren't any pins anywhere, even though I had known I didn't clean up the pins. And then I'm watching a friend's cats and I had used the oven for something 
And I like I decided irrationally to drive back like two hours later and check that I didn't leave the oven on when I like remembered turning it off. So that is what happens when I miss my medication and that is like just how life used to feel for me all the time. So today I have taken my medication. I have moisturized my hands as well as I can and we are prepped and we are ready to wrap up this dress, which I think is gonna be so cute and I'm so excited. So we're gonna hop into it now. And here's Spooky now playing with the Taco Bell bag. Uh, I just thought it was funny, so I thought I'd show you. And then now I am just working on the skirt. I am just ironing down the edges that I sewed together. And then here I am sewing in all the stitching I need to gather this nicely and neatly. I really wanted the gathers for this to be especially neat. I mean, I always do three rows of stitches, but pleats just really matter here because I really love this fabric and I want it to look as professional and nice as possible. So yeah, I'm just basting in those three rows of machine stitching to get everything as beautiful as I want. And then here I am gathering all of this into where the bodice is and I had a little bit of a hard time getting them even because while they were tight they were loose enough that you had to kind of move some stuff around but I did figure it out. I've been really liking pinning with the pin head sticking out of the gather so I can sew from whichever side I want and pin from whichever side I want and then I can easily see the heads in the machine and just pull them out and then with that all done the last step I have is to put in the ever dreaded zip I think I'm actually really getting better at zippers and I'm pretty excited about it because they're usually my most dreaded part and the part that I dislike the most but lately it's been going really well and I feel like I have it down. I used a red zipper on this pattern for a few reasons. First the red zipper I just don't use red that often so anytime I do use red I try to use a red zipper to use up my red zippers and then second I just thought it was kind of a funny Thing to I guess nerdy people like me. Basically the reason you see plackets over zippers in earlier decades is because it's not supposed to like be seen that you can take your clothes off really quickly I guess. This might not be true but I read it somewhere or saw it on TikTok. I don't know but so I think it's actually kind of funny to put a red zipper into a Valentine's Day dress because it very much implies naughty things and I just think that's absolutely hilarious and I, I do find the fact that closures weren't supposed to be noticed to be really interesting and that it was like unladylike to like show a zipper so I feel like having a red zipper down the back is just the perfect thing to show what a lady I'm not and after this we are ready for the reveal and I'm so excited to show this dress to you absolutely adore this dress. I really love the red zipper that I put in on this guy. I think it's so cute and it's perfect because I don't use my red zippers that often so any chance I have to use a red zipper. I am so happy with the like final I guess of this dress. I think I placed the embroidery really deliberately and it really paid off. Like I absolutely adore this little wavy thing <laughs> i guess here uh i really love the way it's flat here on the gathers and then goes into gathering i always find that a really flattering look um i think the ties in the back are super cute you'll see in the reveal that i had a really hard time getting them to like tie nicely in a bow like i would definitely need a second person if i wanted them to actually be nice in a bow but yeah this is like definitely a very nicely finished dress and probably one of my like best finishings to date i guess i just think uh, i don't know whoa hold up we're knocking things down or things are falling i'll be right back 
everything's fine. It wasn't spooky this time. This time it was my fault. Um, back to the dress. Um, I did really kind of struggle with figuring out the instructions for how to get this facing in. Um, you'll have seen that in the video. Uh, figuring out how to like flip this in the right way was really, really challenging. And I actually put it off. It was the last thing I did on the bodice, even though I could have done it much earlier in the instructions, but I put it off because I felt kind of anxious about figuring out how to do it. Uh, but I did figure it out. It looks really good. Um, particularly, it looks good on the front. I just think this is like pretty impressive and I'm pretty impressed that I did it, if that makes sense. I am a decent seamstress, but I would not say like I'm the best of the best. And this was definitely a more complicated pattern than anything else I had done previously. It feels good to have accomplished something because this just has added layers of complex complexity in past. It's really just been a bodice and a skirt. And in this one, I've also been attaching ties and adding this thing. So I just feel really, really happy with like how much I've grown and how much I've learned. And I also feel glad that like, I've kind of waited to attempt some of these more complicated patterns because I didn't get frustrated because I've now had so many, so much experience with like basic patterns. Uh, but I think that about wraps this up. Definitely make sure to check out anybody else who posts Galentine's Day themed videos. I will link a playlist and link everyone who participates down below. I love Galentine's and uh, now I have the perfect dress for it. Other than that, uh, I am, I did mention that I was gonna sell the rest of this yardage. If you are interested in it, go ahead and DM me. I think I have, let me check, I actually have it right here. So I have two and a half yards of the full length and then one and five eighths yard of just the top part that does not have the embroidery on it uh, or has less embroidery on it. So that is what I have. I, I don't know, make me an offer. I don't know what I'm pricing it at, but yeah, just go ahead and DM me via Instagram and we can figure out how to get it sent out. It is really gorgeous fabric. And I just know that like this dress is all I want from it. And so now that I am all wrapped up with it, I am definitely interested in selling this to a, someone who loves vintage like I do and who will make a really awesome piece out of it. And then if you would like to support this channel, you kind of know the drill. If you would like, comment, and subscribe down below, I would really appreciate it. It would really help me out. Uh, but yeah, that is it. And I hope to see you next time. Bye.